Tastes like a blue futon. Digital world, like I said, because the same shirt. Put him up, Bobby. Who's Bobby? 22 July. Have I seen this movie? No, just because it came out like three days ago. Directed by Paul Greengrass, who did United 93. Most of the Bourne movies and other stuff out there. Yeah, of course he did other stuff. But let me go watch it. And I'll let you know if it is a very good movie. Like Patriot's Day or United 93. I don't know what I'm doing though. Alright, so I just got done watching 22 July. What's it about? Well, it was about a terrorist attack that happened 22 July 2011 in Norway where it killed 77 people. I believe 8 at the Norwegian Prime Minister building and 69 kids, teenagers at a camp on an island in Norway. Terrorist attack, this happened 2011 and what this shows is basically three stories. It shows the attacks happening off the bat and it goes into the Prime Minister and what he does. The lawyer of how he's going to help, not really help, but be his client because he picked him and the boy story who got shot five times and trying to recover and make it to the courtroom. So what I like about this movie, Paul Greengrass knows how to direct a movie with camera angles and cinematography and it is very well shot. I love how you're in Norway, you actually see the scoping mountains and the landscape is almost a part of the movie. It's very wide scope, very well shot and actually seen. There are a couple good storylines in this movie. Like I said, I really like, for some reason, the lawyer storyline the most just because you're intrigued of what this lawyer is going through because he's got to basically help his client, who the client picked him, to that he killed 77 people. Is he do the insanity plea or does he just listen to his client who's like, no, I'm not insane. I did it on purpose and I want the world to know why I did it. Also, it's a very intriguing story to know what happened because I really didn't know about this terrorist attack. I probably heard about it on the news. Like, oh, an attack in Norway, that sucks. Kind of, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, it happened, that's really sucking it, it sucks. So this brings the light of what actually happens in other countries around the world that doesn't really affect you, but it can affect other people because apparently one in four Norwegians knew someone that was involved in this attack. So what I didn't like about this movie, I wasn't emotionally invested in this movie, kind of like channeling or Patriot's Day or other movies kind of like this or United 93, World Trade Center, maybe because it's not emotionally impact of the estates. This one just didn't emotionally impact me. It kind of sucks because you kind of want to feel it when the attacks were happening, it sucked. The attacks were graphic and realistic, but then the storyline of the kid going through the rehab and doing it, I wasn't feeling emotional impact with that. And then the Prime Minister storyline was a complete wash of, that, that storyline was a complete wash. It was a two hour and 22 minute movie, almost the exact same as Angel and Jolie movie I just watched, but his storyline, very weak. The lawyer storyline, I was intrigued by what's gonna happen next, what's gonna happen next, what's this lawyer actually gonna have to do, what's he going through? And then the kid who got shot five times, his emotional, psychological meltdowns and him wanting to survive and everything. But with him, I mean, it's a good storyline and him with his family, but I just didn't feel any emotional impact with this. And the main reason of why this movie is what I just said. Why this movie? Why July 22? Why did Paul Greengrass choose this terrorist attack? There's a lot of choose from, so why this one? It's very interesting. I did read some couple interviews, I do research. I don't know if this is because of the multiculturalism and it's a Europe thing, so Brexit, and this guy is far right terrorist group of the Templars or something, the Knights of the Templar. And they did an interview of a guy that was part of it, and he's basically like, I want to do this, but violence is not the way to do this. And so of course, like you have you have those lone terrorists, they're lone wolves. He's a lone wolf that believed in Nazism and believed multiculturalism to Europe. The migration factors is too much of what is happening of them. Europeans not caring for Europeans, them caring about other people before themselves. So is this supposed to be a kick at Brexit, at Trump, at stuff going on right now? I don't know. So maybe that's the why for 22 July of why Paul Greengrass chose to do this movie. But overall, the acting was good. It was an okay movie in my opinion. For some reason, it was just emotionless. I was kind of bored with the movie. And some of the editing was really weird of how it would cut real quick. Quick note, Norway, the max punishment is 21 years. And in this movie, it says indefinite. So, of course, true story. But is it true and everything? And of course, when he is shooting up the kids at the camp, he would say, this is for all you liberals and Marxists. Did he really say that? I don't know. That was never questioned. So it's one of those things where it's like, are you putting the message in the movie that's not supposed to be in there? I wish it was more like Patriot's Day where it had more real life footage mixed with the actual actors like Mark Wahlberg and everything, but this wasn't like it. 
Like I said, something about this, it just didn't click with me. It was very emotionless, in my opinion. I wasn't feeling for any of the characters. I just wasn't emotionally attached to this movie, and that's a big issue. I just wasn't feeling it, and it sucks because this is a story that needs to be told, but something about it just didn't just didn't sit right with me. So good about the movie. Good scope, good cinematography. Paul Greengrass directed this movie well, but why this movie? Why focus on this attack? The three storylines, Prime Minister one was a wash. The family one really wasn't emotional for me. The older one was the best one. But 22 July will receive a two out of five blue food talks, which equals a 40%. Something about this movie just didn't click for me. I wasn't emotionally invested in a movie like this. You want to be emotionally invested. 77 people died. You want to feel emotional, and I just didn't feel it. Sorry. So let's see what the users and critics on Rotten Tomato gave this movie. All right, am I in the wrong? We have critics, an 80%. Audience score, an 89%. Here's the critic consensus. 22 July offers a hard-hitting, close-up look at the after effects of terrorism, telling a story with a thriller's visceral impact and the lingering emotional renaissance of a drama. It's interesting, there's no audience review for our Rotten Tomato and all the other people giving it a rotten rating are giving it close to two out of fives as well. So that's very interesting. So it seems like it's one of those movies where you either like it or you think it's okay. It's not a bad movie, but you just are like, there was no emotional punch to it. It's, I hate to say one note, but it was no angry dialogue in this movie. Like everyone was monotone and I don't know, you need to feel angry. You need to feel like, fuck this guy, but you just don't feel it for some reason. But anyway, are you with me with my 40%? The audience score 89 or the critics 80? I don't know, something about it, eh. Cheese like the Blue Futon, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think it's Blue Futon Utopia. You Blue Futonians, thanks for watching and have a great day. Venom came out to crazy, but that's not about uh, Venom, it's about 22 July. Like I said, this is a right wing lone wolf question. Will they ever do a left wing lone wolf terrorist story? I don't know. I would like to see both sides, but will we see it? I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. I have nothing, okay? You wanna say something funny? It's like, hey, I put out Schindler's List, funny movie. <laughs> not though.